Bonjour. Comment ça va? Bien. Um, hello. If you have blocks, they will be handy today. So if you, maybe you'll do this the first time on the live, and then if you want to later come back and do it again. These are all saved to uh, my profile now, so you can come back and take them 20 times if you love to. Um, but if you've got blocks, use them or have them for today. If not, no worries, you don't need them that much. But um, you can just take those off to the side for now and um, we'll start on, on our sides. Hello, nice to see everybody. What's up, Lauren, Jennifer. So um, some of you requested some twisting and some of you requested arm balancing. I'm gonna put those things together. Actually, I think someone said um, twisty crow stuff. So that's what this class is, lucky you. Um, we'll start with a little bit of release for neck and shoulders and jaw and stuff. Uh, and then we'll get into the fun things. So go ahead and get yourself to, on one side. Welcome, if you're doing this in the middle of your work day, good for you. But set yourself up so that you're laying down onto one side. I'll just scooch a little bit so I don't have my back to you. Um, if the ear doesn't quite find the floor, you could always pat up a blanket or something here. Let the top arm circle up and overhead. And you'll find a little bit of a stretch here, really elongate from hip to armpit. Keep the circle going, and as you open the chest, let your chest turn open towards your side. Keep the circle going in the same direction five more times. And I like to incorporate a little bit of head movement with this so that as my chest opens, I'm also turning my head to look down arm and feel free to play with your arm position. Meaning when your arm goes out wide to the side, you might turn the palm to face down, which will be a little bit of internal rotation. And especially in this T shape, I find I get a really good stretch across my pectoral muscles, like the muscles of the chest. Two more arm circles. And don't be deceived, we're starting chill, um, but you, you will work, I promise. So give yourself the opportunity to like just do this and not have it be the hardest thing you've done in your life and become attuned to the little things. After five circles, reverse the other direction. I think only the sensitive are truly strong. There's, some, there's a quote like that, like only the gentle are truly strong. So here, know that you're putting on your gentle pants for a second and exploring how this movement in your body feels to you today. Twice more. So know that you don't always want to like hammer every day. Respect yourself, respect your human vessel machine. One more circle, opening heart, and circling back around. Once you've completed that side, just with not too much drama, flip like a little pancake onto your other side. So you'll just lay, have roughly knees a bit forward, head in line with the spine more or less, and the arms start with the hands together. Top arm reaches up and overhead big circle around and back and you know your knees are staying mostly together but don't jam them if they move a bit that's okay um, if SI joint stuff like if your sacrum um, feels a little bit funky in this you can always have a block between your knees too and what that'll do is help your pelvis to stay stacked um, and the hips to stay squared even though your upper chest is getting this nice little gentle twist one more circle in first direction for me just breathing however you need to as you move. Same motion, just switch other way. And you might feel this as a stretch into neck, into chest, maybe even down the arm, into the side of your ribs, and your waist. It's a really lovely movement to do. I love to do this anytime I feel like I'm building up neck tension or if I've got a headache or something. There's something kind of magical about this movement. I learned it from my friend Paluna. Thank you, Paluna. All the way around. This is your last circle. Once you've completed it, lay onto the back. Heel. 
to just have your knees bent, soles of feet flat onto the floor. And if you have a block, place it in between your inner legs. If not, don't worry. Hands behind the head, curl up head, neck, and shoulders. Breathe out as you do that. Breathe in to lower back down. I'm just gonna turn the music up. Exhale, curl, and inhale, lower. Exhale, curl, up. Inhale, lower down. Exhale, lift. We pick up tempo right here, up and down. Curl up, and lower. Told you we get going. As you lift and lower, press your legs into the block between them. Four more, up and down. Last two. Final one, hold up at the top, press into the block, twist your ribs towards your right. Back through center, rotate towards your left. And back through center, keep going like that. Every time I hear this song, I feel like I'm like, you know, 2009 or something taking a really sweaty vinyasa class. Pick up tempo here, up and down to curl, lower down, twist to the left, lower down, right side, twist. So here we are, twisting and moving. Four, I know you got too excited. Three, up and down, two. We'll go back through the center, slow down tempo, two counts, curl up, up, and lengthen and lower. Three more like that. Exhaling to lift. Inhaling to lower back down. So syncing up movement and breath, because it's helpful. This is the last one. Curl and stay. Get lighter on your feet. Flow both legs up into tabletop. Ha. So gently press the lower back into the floor like an imprint. Um, we're just going to play with that today. So back is long. Try to keep the lower back on the floor, ribs grounded. Hinge your thigh bones a little bit away and then pull them back in. And thigh bones move a little away and in. If you don't have a block, legs can be pressed into each other or do your frog like we sometimes do. Um, and if this puts too much pressure on your head, you can always lower upper body down. It's not that important that it's lifted. I'm just trying to wake up through your lower core. So again, legs hinging away, woo, and then back up. Your back is not leaving the ground as your legs hinge away and as they lift. Two more times. Last one. Feel a little tremble. Hold the legs up at the top. Just for fun, lower your head down. Lower your arms down beside your body. Now see if you can reverse curl. So curl the tailbone up and off of the floor, maybe the low back, and lower back down. Three more. Up, lift, and lower. <laughs> for two. This last one, you know we gotta hold, right? So do it. Try to peel the tailbone off, maybe a little lower back on. Four breaths. I already regret saying four breaths. Three, but I already said it. Uh-oh. Two more. Whew. Last one. Lower your butt down, hold behind your thigh bones, rock and roll, up and down. So try to find a little bit of a rock, but now the first couple you might use some momentum and then try to take the momentum out of it. So I'm imagining suspenders between my ribs and my hips and I'm trying to keep the suspenders on regardless of the shape. Yeah, I got rolling smoother. Two more. It's like the butt lift and then you lift. You practiced it. Hold this one at the top of your motion. Maybe reach both arms forward. It's like half bow. For eight, seven, you can count the rest. Squeeze into the block to find your center line. Four, three, two, one. Ooh, move this for a sec -y. We'll use it in a moment if you've got one. Walk yourself into a tabletop position. Right away, inhale to back bend. So lift your tail, lift your chest, open up. And then exhale into cat shape. Sometimes we do that with the reverse. Inhale into a back bend. Lauren's like, when do we let her rip? Exhale to cow. Some of us are doing um, a 40 day Kundalini meditation and it involves this motion. What about this fast? For three minutes, imagine. Feel really good after. Here, reach your right arm up towards the ceiling. Twist towards your left, exhale. Three more, lifting one arm up, rotating, and wrapping, bending on their elbow. For two. I thought you'd like that. Exhale, twist. Last one, reach up, touch infinity and beyond, and twist your arm to the floor. Let the ear go to the ground, other hand to the lower back. 
Open the other shoulder. Two breaths. Hand down to the floor. Untwist your arm. I said right, but I realized I didn't need to mirror. Sorry. Other hand. So lift one arm up. The other hand. Twist. Thread. Four times through this. So just moving with breath. This is like a misfit strategy. Let's move first. Kind of get the motion going. And then settle into the stretch. So now we've coaxed the body. And settle in here. Ear to the ground. Other hand to lower back. Mom, when you watch this, the next time my friend Krista does a Kundalini 40 day meditation, you should do it too. Just chanting, it's great. Dad would love it. Just like waking up to you being like, <laughs> singing all the stuff. Be good. Hand to the ground, unravel your chest. Look skyward. And then hand to the ground. So settle in both of your palms. Tuck your toes under, lift your knees up off of the floor. Just a little hover here. I, you might have noticed by now one of my favorite ways to get into core. You don't always have to do curls to feel your center. So here, it's the core job to keep you neutral. Two more breaths, knees are off of the floor. One more. Knees down, keep toes tucked, walk hands back to the feet. Sit your butt towards your heels, wrists together, palms touch, elbows touch. Slide one forearm up the other. So it's like you're trying to knead the dough of your forearms. Like mushing, high paying, and then go the other way. Mushing, mushing, mushing. And it kind of warms up the skin and the tissue. Two, and you're getting a foot stretch. One, release that out, open, close, open, close, open, close. So you want hands and wrists to be happy before you balance on them. Let's work on them. Measure your armpits. So this is about shoulders distance. If you take your thumbs to your armpits and then reach your hands forward of that. That's a good like habit to get into, having your hands about that far away when you're in a plank or an upward facing dog. But first we'll prep the wrist. So hands to the floor, keep your elbows straight, thumbs on the ground today. Lift your palms up a little and lower your palms down. Sorry, you couldn't see. Palms lift up and palms lower down. Palms lift up. Palms lower down. If you love
through the collarbones and wave back down. Last one. We'll add rotation. Lift to the top. Twist to the right side. Left ear and shoulder center. And come on back through middle. Look under left armpit, right ear and shoulder twist to center. And come back up through middle. One more each way. Last time, twist your chest. Open through the center, then bone by bone, lower down. Ooh, lowry. Ground your palms, sit back, wide-legged extended child's pose. Make some space, rest the torso between the knees, and take two breaths. Soften when you can. From there, roll up to seated. From seated, stack your spine. Now, lift your hips. You've got one line, hips over top of knees. Stick one leg out to the side. We'll call this my left leg, because I think that's what it looks like to you. Arms reach out to the side. Side bend towards your right. Then back up to center. We'll do that three more times. So just opening up this side, but lengthening, not scrunching into this side. Two more, up and over. You better believe the last one we're holding. So up and over, be sure that the outer blade of your left foot is on the floor. Hold here. You can think about this as like extended um, side angle if you're a yogi. So try to make one line from outer foot to top of arm. And place this right hand down to the floor. Without sinking into it, still keep this sense of elongation. You can stay as you are, or see if you can press into the hand and the foot so much, you can lift your right knee off the floor. If you can, straighten the leg, maybe pulse leg up and down. This is gonna help when we get to the twisting arm balance. Four, three, two, and one. If it's not already, slide your knee down, launch off of your right hand, sneak, whoops, this leg in. I got a crystal on my foot. And then other leg goes out. It's for communication. Up and over, side bend. How am I doing? And lifting back up. We'll put it in my bra for good luck. Three more, up and over. And back up. For two. It's the color blue for my throat chakra. Last one, up and over. Oh. You're like, what's with this person? So lots of engagement in this top side, yeah? That's like a rhetorical question. Maybe one day someone will answer me. But don't type, because you gotta stay in this position. Lower your left hand down to the floor. Side plank variation, cool? Outer blade of your right foot on the ground is down. Foot is heavy. Maybe sneak the left leg up. See if it gets up there, lift and lower for fun. Eight, the arm could be up here too. Seven, six, or behind the head. Choose your own adventure for four. Three, last two. Woo! Slide this left knee in, I told you we'd work. Lower it down, launch up, slide knee in. Hands to the floor, crawl yourself in towards a downward facing dog. I pooped out my crystal. Tuck it away, fell out of my breath. One more breath in down dog. Lift your right leg up and back behind you, three-legged dog, inhale. Need a nose, breathe out as you pull forward to plank. Inhale, three-legged dog. Right knee, right upper arm. Touch it and stay there. Try to make contact. It might not happen. Like, it's not touching, but I'm trying to bring it forward. One more breath. Three-legged dog, right leg up. Twist across to the left. Hold, press into the floor. Thread your right leg through. Drop your left heel down. Lift the top arm up. Two breaths. This will prepare us for where we're going. One more breath. Lower hand down. Slide that right leg back up. Three-legged dog. Inhale. Step foot forward to a lunge. Exhale. High lunge. Breathe in. Stay for the breath out. Twist towards your right. Three breaths. Arms to a T. Feel that your hips aren't twisting, but you're just twisting the chest towards that side. One more breath as you are. Unwind, center, high lunge. Hands down to the floor. Step forward to top of mat. Halfway lift, inhale. Hold on the exhale. Roll up, 
Breathe in. Roll the shoulders from the back. Breathe out. Arms lift. Stretch up high. Inhale. Hold on the exhale. Black mountain. Breathe in. Halfway lift. Hands to the ground. Step back to plank. Inhale as you plank. Lower as you exhale. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Just open the chest. Exhale, downward facing dog. Left leg lifts up, three-legged dog, breathe in. Knee to nose, round forward, breathe out. Inhale, leg high, three-legged dog. Left knee, left upper arm, hold here, try to make contact. Push into the floor, cat spine through your upper back. Three-legged dog, inhale. Twist towards your right side as you exhale. Again, hold there, feel that your ribs are twisting a bit. Thread the leg through, lower back, heel down. Open the chest, modified side plank kind of. Some people call this rock star, the worst name ever. Lower hand down, left leg back up. Step forward, high lunge. Inhale to rise up. Twist to your left as you breathe out. Stay for a couple breath cycles. Just to feel that your head is on top of your hips and you're twisting from the obliques. Ribs are turning. Unravel, high lunge, breathe in. Lower hands down, breathe out. Step forward, inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold, stay folded. Heel toes, your feet turn out a little bit to like 10 and one. And bend your knees like a low squat. Oops, I'm out of here. So once you're in your low squat, hands go down to the floor. Try to slide your knees up the upper arm bones. And if they make contact, you might lift one foot, maybe other foot, and look, you might be in crow pose. So in this shape, just opening through collarbones, even though your spine is round, lift the back of your ribs towards the ceiling, like an angry cat, or like you know, an animal does when it's like, <sighs> but without shoulders in the ears. Two more breaths like this. You might just work one foot at a time, trying to get into it. Lower feet down, find a squat, that's where you'll recover. For your counter stretch, take the backs of the hands together and that will be great. I'm gonna show you something. So if you have a block or two, some people prefer this, some people are like, nah, I hate this. But if you're working on crow, you can make a little um, like pedestal for yourself and have your feet on it. My heels aren't on, just my toes are on. And then that way I can get my knees higher up my armpits which will allow me to lean in more. Don't look back at the blocks, but instead look just underneath of your head. So you're a little forward. Shift weight forward. See if you lift one toe, maybe both toes. So that's a good option. It doesn't have to be blocks, but something kind of stable if you're working on your center crow. You can try it for a breath if you want. I'll just give you time. I'm not in it, just for reference. This is not the shape. And then hop off if you're on the block. Just sit on them for a second. So you sit, I'll show you the next shape. It's putting together a lot of the stuff we did so far. So it's a side crawl. Like which side is clearest to show you from. So I'll start facing this way. I think this will be the best. So being a little perked, my heels are not on the floor, my legs are together. I'll take my right arm, twist towards my left. And I take the right elbow to the outside of the thigh. If that's not happening, Cool, you'll work on the prep for it. So you can be like here, twisting towards your left. <laughs> and then once you have contact, if you do, your hands will go down to the ground. Your fingers face the same way you're twisting towards. So you'll have your chest and your fingers facing the same direction. Then lean some weight into the arm. I've only got my outer knee on my right arm, not my left. My left one is not on, on anything. And maybe your toes lift up. It's not that much of like a strength thing, it's more of a mental thing. You gotta like get over the fact that you might fall down. Cause you might. If you've got side crow, you might try straightening both legs and reaching them out. This is a Kundinyasana, a different yoga posture. Doesn't really matter too much what the names are right now. But try it. So try it on side one. <laughs> Don't just give me the eyeballs emoji. Maybe try it. Um, and, and this is really good prep. Also twisted chair, great prep. If you have questions after side one, type me. And we'll try side two. Tay Yang, I don't know what you're laughing at, but I'm glad that you thought something was funny.
Okay, so give yourself a shot on side number one. I'll keep looking at this thing in case you have some questions. And then we'll continue into side two. So we're not like doing a fancy vinyasa, it's only half hour class. <laughs> You'll lift your left arm up, and that idea of making space like we did in the opening circles, and twisting, taking left elbow to outer right thigh bone. And can you see how my knees wanted to come apart like that? I'm gonna scooch my left knee back so it's still in line. Because what that's telling me is if my knee's coming forward, my pelvis is kind of offset, but I want my pelvis more or less square. And the hands go down to the ground, same deal, whether fingers are facing the same direction as your chest, maybe shift weight. I'll show it from a different angle too, so you can see my right elbow, this one, is not attached to anything, but I still want to keep it fortified like it's in chaturanga, so like it's in a push-up, um, so it's not off the side, it's still connected, everything's connected. You might try this thing, you might try straightening the legs, suddenly you're a break dancer. Yeah, Lana, you did it. In forward crow, how far in your, that's a great question. So D, yeah, in forward crow, um, ideally knees on triceps, they have to be above your elbows. So um, crane is more when it's like in the armpit and your arms are straight, um, but that takes like quite a lot of mobility. So yeah, with crow, they're on like the backs of your, your triceps basically. Um, another way to learn it is to have the knees a bit on the outsides, so they clamp in, like your arms are a block and you're squeezing into the block of your arms. And sometimes people find that easier to kind of like thigh master the outside of their arms. <laughs> I think I've put that together. I can only do one side, one other side impossible. Yeah, that's, that, that's definitely um, a common occurrence. So that has to do with a few things. It could be, if you think about how much of a twist that move requires. There could just be some mobility where it's like harder to twist to one side than the other. Um, yeah, that's the best. Amazing, Lacey, you did it for a second. And then you did like 20 push-ups after, right? Yeah, one side is very common. I think when I first started doing this, yeah, I think I could only do it on my right side. It also might have to do with shoulder stability since it is just basically a one-armed movement. Um, so just keep trying to work on, yeah, harder on the left for you. I think that that's probably most of our patterns, if I'm correct. For most people, it's it's harder to twist to that side. I get confused with rights and lefts a lot. So anyway, once you've had enough of that, then what I'd recommend personally is laying down onto the back, taking a second, grounding your feet, Arms out a bit to the sides, palms face up so the chest can open, and lift your hips up towards the sky. So let the whole front line of your body open for a second here, especially the chest. Lift the heart towards the sky, back of head is heavy, no pressure in the neck. Three breaths, or more if you've got time, please. But that's a lot of scrunching and like getting into a little ball shape and potentially creating um, work in the upper body. So just let that go for a couple breaths. And when you're ready, roll down through your spine, bone by bone by bone, grounding yourself. And letting the knees sway a couple times, right and left. And let me know what you experienced. So um, if that was like glorious, that's good. And if it wasn't, that's good too. There's something to learn from all the experiences. Mm. Where does where does the weight go? All in one arm. Yeah, so you're only you're balancing on the one arm. Um, but I don't really feel that this is like that big of like a arm or upper body thing. I think it's more of a core thing. It, and maybe it's just like if you wrap your brain around being like I'm gonna use my center to twist and my center to lift then, yeah, because it technically it is one arm, but it's the whole unit. But yeah, definitely, that you're, you're only balancing on one arm. The other elbow is uh, not holding anything. Anyway. Leah, I'm glad you can do it. We'll see you all tomorrow.